We're live. Okay, great. Well, welcome to our October Quilting, Embroidery, Sewing, and Surging Club, which is our Jelly Roll Challenge. And I'm also going to be talking about some quick gifts you can make for Christmas because, we, you know, we're, we're getting to that time. But for those of you that don't know, is we, we were actually going to do this back in April. Mm -hmm. And it got put off, so we, we shoved everything out until now. If you do have an entry, go ahead and bring it in. Our voting is going to start on Tuesday, since we have club on Tuesday also. So we want to make sure you see everything. And we're going to have voting at that time. I'm going to have a bin, or, or this thing, up at the register where people can vote. And then you'll just put the number on because every all the ones will have a number on them and you can just vote that way. Or you can vote on Facebook, right, Stefan? Yes. Okay, they'll be able to vote on. Now don't go and vote like 30 times though, okay? You know, because you That's not win. fair. <laughs> but yeah, so you can vote there. And what I'll be doing, so if you do bring it in, just so you know, after our club on Tuesday, I'm going to be putting everything up on our high shelf in the back so people can see it, but they can't touch it so we can keep them nice and clean because then we know we get oil on everything so and then I was going to talk a little oh first of all first and foremost for everybody to know um, we, we need to clear out a lot of our fashion fabric that we have and so we're going to be marking it down 50 to 80 percent starting probably the last part of October 1st week of November and we're going to put it in here and out there and down the hall and there, we're gonna have a big sale. So if you need a wool, if you need a cashmere, if you need silk, if you need bridal lace, if you need chiffon, whatever, come on in and we're just, we're gonna start marking it down. So come on in and get ready for all your winter and summer things, okay? And that will be happening. Another thing, cause I know some of you have this, who knows what this is? Do you guys know what this is? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a floppy drive. This is an external floppy drive. I had a lady come in, and unfortunately I can't remember her name, um, but a lot of her designs were still on floppies because her sewing machine used the floppies. So she just put the floppy in and she could do the design. Well, you know, technology has moved on. She has a new machine, but she has no way to get her designs off the floppy drive and into her computer and then into her new machine. So I have one. I'm here on Tuesdays and some Wednesdays. And so if you need help doing that and you have floppies and you have no way to get them from your floppy drive to your computer, just bring in a brand new USB drive and your floppies. And when I'm here, I will see if I can get them from there to your USB and then you won't lose those designs because it's hard. A lot of us may have hundreds and thousands of designs on floppies and we can't get them off. So I did find this. I kept thinking, I know I have one. I know and I went digging and I have one. Hopefully it still works. So I have that. Um, leggings class. We're, um, there's, I'm going to do a flat lock leggings class that is going to be this Wednesday from 11 to 1 and then next Saturday from 10 to 1, I think. Yeah, oh, I guess it's a two-hour class, so 10 to noon on Saturday. You just make sure you, you, know, you sign up because everything needs to be cut out beforehand since we can't cut out anything here. So everything will be needed to cut out, but then we will sew them up and we'll talk about that. November, if you've seen my jacket, I have a jacket and a in the hoop backpack in the out in the front. So in the front area down over by the threads, I have a jacket that I've done all kinds of quilting on with, I actually did it all with the serger, but I'm also gonna show you how to do bobbin work on your sewing machine. So I will show you how to use fancy threads how to do your quilting. I did all kinds of things to make that jacket and I'm going to go through all the different techniques I used and um, all different attachments and things that I put on the cover stitch machine and everything like that. So I'll be going over all of that. And then there's an in the hoop backpack. It's really cute though, this thing. And it has some cork on it and it has little D rings and all kinds of stuff and it's all done in the hoop. So I will be talking about that. It takes a long time in the hoop, so I'll just show you this is first hooping, this is second hooping, and this is how you put it all together because I can't sit here and say, okay, now guys, just, you know, as you're bored. So I will show you how to do that. Excuse me? Yes. So, so that's like a lecture class, right? Right, same as this. Yeah, okay. This is just our November club. Oh, yes. oh you're going to do it It's in November. November club, yes. Oh, so great, I just want to let great, you know great, what's great, out great. there so you can come and see that. And December club, what we decided, usually we have a potluck. Well, obviously we can't do the potluck anymore. 
So what we decided to do is do a gift exchange. So if you want to make just something cute and small, you know, out of what's hanging around your house, right? Because some of us have things hanging. You know, so say I just want to make a cute little bag. I can make a cute little bag. And then we're, what we're going to do is we'll, then we will exchange gifts. You know, you'll pick a, a number out of, you know, whoever has the first number will come up and get to choose. And then I'll, we will let you steal from somebody else if you want to, if you really want something. So we'll see. Yeah, because we know if Mindy makes one of her purses, we're all going to be fighting over her purse, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, but just make something cute and fun, and we will do a gift exchange instead. And then we'll just, and then I'll also be showing you some quick and fast gifts that you can do. Because, you know, we're all about, oh my goodness, we got to make some fast little gifts. Uh, some other, another thing that we got in, a lady asked for us to get these in, and this is just a little wine carrier or Martinelli sparkling cider, if you go for that a little kit that you can whip these up. So this is a nice fast gift that you can make for people. And so we have these available for that. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the jelly rolls first, and then I'll talk about some of these things, and then I'll have those of you that brought in your challenges go ahead and talk about yours if you would like to. And um, when I first started doing, back in Colorado when they asked me to do my seminars, I was hired because I was the garment person. We had a quilter, we had a home deck, and I was the garment person. But then when I started doing it, they said, oh, but by the way, when you do club, you gotta do everything. Because, you know, we, we have people that are do all kinds of things. So I started getting into the world of quilting. And the first thing I realized is I don't have a clue to what they're talking about when they were talking about fat quarters and jelly rolls and turnovers and layer cakes and charm squares and I didn't know what they were talking about and I forgot to grab a jelly roll but the jelly rolls are just two and a half inch strips of fabric and a lot of times people think well they're just for quilters right and they ignore them but there's a lot of things you can do besides making a quilt so you know this is one of my this is an apron I made out of flirty 30s fabric so you can see it has little clothes pins, little irons and stuff on there. And so I used my, my little strips to make an apron. I know that there's a cute little pattern that I had years ago, which was, oh, thank you, Stefan. So this is what a jelly roll will look like. And of course, some of us buy them and they look so pretty, we won't take them apart. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice. And this is probably why they call them a jelly roll, you know, because you can get all the different colors in them and you can get them all in one color, like all ivories or all blacks or something, but you can do multiple colors. And then you can see them all here. They're so pretty. And I have a tendency to not want to take them apart because once you open it, it's all over. It's not as pretty anymore, but that's a jelly roll. But um, there's another cute little thing that I did that I do for little girls. They had just a t-shirt and then you would do this on the bottom to make a little dress. as a quick little dress. So you do just do a bunch of little jelly rolls just sew them onto the bottom of the t-shirt and all of a sudden they have a dress. And so we would do a lot of those. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with jelly rolls. You can even do jackets. You know, as you just start sewing them together, you can do all kinds of things. And of course, tote bags. Tote bags are, are a good thing. This is something I whipped up. And this is one that I did a quilt as, a quilt as you go one. And so it has fusible fleece in it. And I did this a couple of years ago. I had this big, beautiful pumpkin design. So I made a pocket to put on there. But when I was doing this, um, what you do is you start, like this one, I would start in the center. I would put the next one down, sew it and flip it. And then I would press it and then sew and flip and sew and flip. And so you go all the way along there. And when I did this, I made sure I started in the middle and I went out. So when I sewed this, I actually sewed the pocket in also. So the pocket is sewn underneath that one strip. Oh, oh yes, go ahead and stand up and I'm do yours real quick. Oh no, that's not a problem. I've got an emergency card. Um, oh, okay. So I made these Japanese knot bags. So you just put the long one to the short one like that, and it makes a little bag that you can carry on your wrist. And then to go along with the Japanese theme on the inside, they're reversible. I made their it's fabric with the monuments and the Japanese cherry blossoms it's all beautiful oh, it's really nice and I have a different one do you mind showing the camera 
for each of these. Yeah, we can do that afterwards. Oh, okay, okay. yes, so yes, we'll, yes, we'll yes. We'll take pictures afterwards, yes. And then this one has a different color on the inside. Beautiful. Perfect. No pressure. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, you have to go. No, that's okay. That's too bad. No, no. Sounds like a All right, we'll put that. Thank you. You're welcome. So this one was a quilt as you go, and you can even see on the inside, it's only one layer. I didn't make it so it could stand up like these. It's just one layer, and you can see all the stitching as the quilt as you go. So these make for real quick and fun things, and this is one that I just, I had this beautiful pumpkin design, and I had the bling to go with it, and I said, what am I going to do? Oh, okay, so I just made my orange and black pumpkin bag for fall. This is another quilt as you go. This bag has been through a lot. This is my travel bag because it has a zipper on top. And when I'm traveling, you can see, oh, I won't, it's pretty dirty. It's been through a lot of airplanes. But it's another quilt as you go one, but it does have a full lining. So I quilted as I went, but then I did fully line it. And it has a lot of pockets. So you can do a lot of fun things with your jelly rolls. You know, you're not just, so many times we think, oh, it's just four. So we just do that. This is another one with our with the jelly rolls here. And this was yardage, and I just quilted that with all my jelly rolls. And what I did with this is I actually did, using variegated thread, I went and used a lot of the fancy stitches in my machine. This is a great way to see what they look like. So a lot of times we have our machines and they have 800 stitches in them, right? And we use the straight stitch, the zigzag, and maybe the triple stitch. You know, we need to branch out. So this was just a fun way to use some of my pretty thread and just to sew and see what all these different stitches are going to look like. So I did that. And these are actually handmade porcelain buttons and they do unbuckle, so they make a, I mean, they do unbutton. So they do that so you could put something in here that won't fall out but it just has all of its pockets on the outside and it does have the foam in there. This is right when the foam came out. This is how old that bag is. I was so excited to, be, to have the foam because it stands up by itself. So that's another thing you can do. Now we're going to head off into, Judy, would you like to talk about your? Oh, well, I made Doodle Stick Horse out of. Um, I love that. I had made these uh, years ago for my granddaughters that are now 33 uh -huh. and, and um, <laughs> what is it? she'll be 30 in next month. Um, but this one I made for my new granddaughter for Christmas. Uh -huh. She's two years old. So anyway, um, it's made out of strips. And what I did, I, I took the foam uh, sheet, whatever, uh, I don't know what they call it nowadays, but you know, the foam flakes yes. in your bag. Uh -huh. And that is what I sewed the strips to. And um, basically that, that's it. I mean, I hate the yarn for the hair, uh, for the mane is uh, sewn on first, just kind of a quick thing before I sealed it up. And then um, I glued it also but with the hot glue. Uh-huh. So, are That's there any great. questions? Oh, I love it. <laughs> the only thing I did, I, I need to shorten the stick about yeah, eight inches. Uh-huh. Because yeah. it called for a three-foot stick. I think that's a little longer than three yeah. feet. But that's all I could get at the moment. So, that's it. Great. I'll hold that up. Yeah, so you, if you want to vote on this, you can also come in and see it. She did all kinds of quilting on here. And then this is just adorable with it. She, the way she you know, did the little reins and everything in the eyes, the buttons for the eyes. And all kinds of fun stuff. It's absolutely adorable. And I just love the, I like the horse head. I like the shape of it. It's a really nice shape. 
And Judy did give me the what the pattern is. It's no longer in print, of course, but if you're really interested in it, then we can get you that information. You can go in search of, of that. Okay. Now this is a, a handbag and I'll read what she says. So Becky did this one and it's a Margot handbag by Lazy Girl Designs. And then, so she did the jelly rolls on the inside. So she used all those different jelly rolls to make her lining. And then the exterior is made with, so she has quilting cotton and cork fabric on this side. You can see the pockets. So it has one pocket on this side, one pocket on this side. And so this is a cork fabric that we have in the store. This is all stuff from the store. And then this is um, quilting cotton and then she decorated with a heat transfer vinyl design and then she put Schwartzky crystals on there. So mm -hmm. that's the back, that's the front. And then of course she has coordinating colors as her jelly roll with pockets. And it's nice because she, it does have a zipper on it because don't we love zippers? to keep all of our stuff from disappearing. So it does have the zipper top, which is nice. And she has a little pull on there, a little starfish. And then she does have a bottom in here, a stiff bottom. So it's gonna stand up a little bit better with that. And then, and all the pockets on the inside, because we always have to have lots of pockets, right? Pockets everywhere. So that is the one challenge. This one, also Becky did this one too. She's, she's been trying to use up a lot of her fabric. So, or she just used the jelly rolls for this. And, and then what's really nice, what makes these pop is she put little strips of her yardage. So she cut these a little bit. So she has the big yardage in the back and then she cut little strips of it. And this is, you know, this is one of these strip is, you know, quilt as you go ones too. You quilt and quilt and quilt and quilt and then you go this way. And so she did that, but I just, that's a beautiful table runner. Oh yeah. So that's really pretty. And then the back, and this is all batiks. So it's all done in batiks. So we have that one. And then we have, now you're not voting on any of my stuff. Okay. So don't, don't even worry about those. Those are awful, but these other ones. And of course we saw the little bags here. Those are really nice. And then we have, now Mindy, she can't come. Hi Mindy, she's probably watching us. So I'm gonna read what, what she wrote. This is her Tuffet. So the Tuffet kit contained 18 inch foam, board, high loft batting, and it also had the pattern on how to cut it. And so then um, she actually asked Tina to make her a custom jelly roll of all blue. Yes, we do do that. We're crazy people. If you call, we've done custom jelly rolls for people. I know she did a really nice pink one um, for a lady who was doing, um, you know, a baby quilt for girls and stuff. So anyway, so she used that. She she sewed on her crescendo. So she sewed the two and a half inch strips together on her crescendo, and then she used the decorative stitches on her crescendo. To do all these decorative stitches now is i mean what a wonderful way to use our decorative stitches because we look at it going i don't know what i do with this stitch it's really cute but what would i put it on right so this is a great way to do it so she put all these decorative stitches on there and she used 40 weight polyester embroidery threads okay then she embroidered on her meridian which is an embroidery only machine all these different flowers so she put all these different flowers on here so she has all the different flowers. Makes me want to go to Hawaii. Wow. <laughs> on there, let's see. So she said, she brought her meridian, assorted flowers around the edge of the tuffet, and she used her positioning app on her phone and just a four by four hoop. So, so she was using this to you know, work on her, how do you do positioning, right? Every project we should learn something new about our machines. And then she used her IQ designer to design the covered button Okay, and there's a name tag on the bottom. Okay, so she used her IQ designer to go and do that. So she has that, and of course, you know, we've got, we've got to love our covered buttons. I love covered buttons. There's, I love using those. 
and Fussy cut those out. Um, let's see. She goes, I assembled the tuffet wood board glued to foam covered with batting. I pulled the cover over it and stapled to the board. And she says, I'm disappointed with the fit of the cover, but oh well. I don't know. I oh, think it looks, looks I think it looks great. Didn't yeah. You? yeah, you're you're just too critical. So anyway, that looks great. And she threw that in. She made the cover button um, and added to the top. And, you know, she's trying to center it in there and get it sewn on. She goes, no easy feat, but yeah, we know that. That's, it's hard to get those cover buttons in there. She added the hardware for the feet and covered the bottom. You know, so she covered this and she put the little things on there. Um, she, she spray painted the feet and added them to the tuppet, making an entire tuppet was easier than spray. She was making the entire tuppet was easier than spray painting the feet. Oh, wow. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, sometimes it can be kind of tricky. Um, she said, here's what she ended up with. Perfect, no fun, yes. I always, want, I always wanted to make one. Not too bad for an old lady with only one good eye. She just had eye surgery, so that's why she can't be here. So I think it's beautiful, Mindy. It's great. And all the different colors. And all the fun stitching that she did. So that is Mindy's. And did you want to talk about yours? It's, uh, I talked well, a little bit about it, but well, that one is just used with a sixty degree. It's made with a sixty degree ruler. Okay. And, and so you just make your stripes and then cut them out and alternate the pattern. Uh huh. And um and then I just stitched in the ditch to quilt it. Okay. And then so the, it wasn't a quilt as you go. It was you sewed it all together first and then you stitched in the ditch afterwards. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then um. The purse, no, that's the purse. You got to go through that one. Yes, I did. I, okay, I, okay. I just read your your little yeah, blurb on the okay. purse. So yeah. I did. I didn't have one for that. I forgot that you said you use your sixty degree ruler yeah. on that. So you know, there's a lot of fun rulers out there that they have. So she used her sixty degree to cut, and then she sewed, and then just quilted like normal. She didn't do a quilt as you go. I've done quilt as you go sometimes, but she did not. But that's that's lovely. I love. I really love how this popped everything else. Otherwise they all kind of blend together like that. You know, they all kind of blend together and this one pops each one of those stripes. So. I made her for me. <laughs> Works for me. Alrighty. So anyway, and what I said before, um, November I'm going to be doing, um, if you saw the jacket that's out by the threads and stuff, and the, there's an in-hoop little backpack that I'm going to be doing in November, December we're going to have a gift exchange. So we're just going to have somebody just making something little. You know, I don't want you spending a lot of money on it. You know, something from your stash or just make something little and we're going to be exchanging gifts. Um, so, like I said, one of the things, now I was going to talk a little bit about some quick gifts that you can do. One is these little wine carriers. And you can get, like this one comes with the pattern and all the, the innards. You can always just buy all the innards after you have the pattern. I know the lady, she came in, she only had all the innards and she needed the pattern. So I had to order them, we just ordered extras. Because they make a really fast gift for somebody. You can do that. Of course, some of us, we have enough stuff that we probably can just do our own without having, you know, once we make one, we're like, oh, I got enough stuff to do 100 of them. So we have that. Um, another one, one thing that I did is I found this. It's called the Wireframe Cosmetic Case. I like things with wireframes, and this is for sale. I do like um, wireframes on things. And so this has, I, I did stuff it, so it has the nice little wireframe so it holds it open. One thing, one thing I've been noticing a lot these days is that there's a lot of very creative people out there and they have very creative ideas, but their sewing skills are not, I wish they would talk to somebody who's been sewing for a lot of years and say, hey, how can I make this easier? Because it's not that this, there's anything particularly wrong with this case, but what she does have you do is she wants you to sew the outside, then sew the inside, and then hand stitch the lining to this. And I'm going, okay, I grew up with sewing with Nancy. You know, I, I, I have a lot of the big name people in my back pocket for teaching me all kinds of crazy stuff. 
and I took, I've been taking a lot of classes. Someone asked me once, they said, how did you get to be able to sell so many different things? And I said, because I listened to friends of mine that sell it. You know, if I needed help with a quilt, I'm gonna go to a, one of my quilting friends that do, does a lot of quilting and say, hey, teach me this technique. If I wanted to do bags, I go to someone who makes bags, teach me this technique. And we, um, we used to take each other's classes. We would laugh about how it seemed like all the people in the classes were always all the other instructors because we wanted to learn from what we considered the best. You know, I wanna learn from someone who knows what they're doing. So what I did is when I made mine, I did not hand sew my lining to the, and it's a cute case. So this is a good pattern. But what I did, and of course I made enough purses, I did it similar to those that did the boxy tote. You know, the, I, I know it's a nightmare for some people, the boxy tote, but I did it basically the same way. And this is, I can tell my, I didn't put my stains in. There we go, now it's straight. So what I did is I left a hole in the lining fabric. You know, I left a hole in it. And so what I did is when, sh when you do this, if you just hold your, she wants you to sew to a certain place, stop sewing, then start sewing and sew over there for the zipper. And all you have to do is when you're sewing it, if you just crisscross your zipper and have it flip down and then just sew around it, it's automatically going to do this nice little, little hanging off thing. So all I did was I did that because I've sewn other purses similar to this. I just crisscrossed those, that zipper. So it, it actually comes with the zipper. It comes with everything but the fabric. Um, so when you do it, when I'm coming down to the side, all I do is I just crisscross the zipper. So when I sew it down, it will automatically have that little opening on it, just like this, okay? So I sewed it around and then the other thing that I don't like a lot of times people have you sew the casing and then they say now open it up and stick it in I'm going I'm not gonna do that I don't want to re-sew so after I sewed that around I actually have a hole in the I, hole there's not a hole I started sewing here and I ended here leaving a gap of about an inch a little less than an inch so before I sewed the lining up I reach inside and I put the stays in. So I just slip those stays right in there and then I sewed this closed. Now, once this bag gets old, and so now I just sewed it closed. Once this bag gets old and ratty and everything, I can just open it up, take my stays out, reuse my stays again, and put it into a different purse. So I like to make mine. I don't do this, oh, let's, let's sew it all closed, now let's cut it open put it in and then hand sew it closed. I, I don't do that, I just leave it open. And this way, those stays aren't gonna go anywhere with that little opening. They're gonna stay right where they are. But this is just a cute little bag. Now, if you can't see the, the fabric I used, it's all witch's potion. So this is a cosmetic bag. It has goblin gas and griffin's blood and powdered unicorn horn. I figure, you know, I had to use something silly for my cosmetic bag. So that is this little, it comes with the wire frame and the zipper. So it comes, of course I had used a different color zipper, but it does come with the wire frame and the zipper. It's a nice little purse bag. Just make a couple of, you know, modifications when you sew it, like I do. You know, I always make modifications, everybody knows. I always make modifications with everything I do. But it's a nice little pattern, you know, especially when you want a box, the bottom because you can always change the size too if you don't need to use that frame but it's nice because it already has the cutout so it's really easy to box those corners on the bag and just makes it really easy to hold it in there and just sew it so it's a cute little pattern and you can do that so that is the cosmetic wire frame case with my modification because I can't stand it. I have to modify everything. <laughs> now, actually, you know, one of these days I'm gonna do a pattern. I actually did the lunchbox that I have out front. It's the lunchbox, if you look at the lunchbox that I did, I'm gonna show that in December. And that's an Emmeline bags, and I don't think I made any changes to that. No, I take that back. I did make a change because I used the insulated, she wants you to use the insole bright, 
but I use the Insel Shine, which is a little bit different. And so I use that as the lining. Usually she has the Insel Bright in between the lining and the outside of the bag, where I use this as the line, because you need the shiny stuff to keep things cold, so you can go and look at that. But here's that cute little cosmetic case for that. Um, let's see. Now I was gonna talk about another quick little gift. And this is one that is, is on there. This is called Christmas Magic Table Set. So of course this is not a Christmas one because who says you have to do Christmas? So this is one that I did using all my fall colors. And you can make it a table runner, so you know, add on to it. I just did the candle, the candle mat that I did use. I did put on a cover button because I had a fussy cuffy little birdie out there. So I was gonna talk a little bit about this. And of course, once again, you know, oh, and this is one that I did. This is one that's done on the serger. So it's done a little bit differently. What I did is I fused all my fabrics together. I sandwiched them together and I fused them together. And then, you know, these are big circles. And then I just served around them using the really heavy candlelight thread or the glamour or whatever threads you want. And I just searched around them and then I sewed them together on my sewing machine. And these I fused down. You can leave them out to get this loop, the scalpy look, or for me, I decided I was gonna fold them down and press them down. But this is nice because I could just keep adding and adding and add. If you have a long table, you can just add, keep on adding. But this was, this is my Christmas one. So I have that. And of course it only has, I didn't put the extra ones in. I never even thought about putting extra little petals in. And I thought, what a cute idea. Now for hers, because you know I have to change things up, um, what she has you do is in the directions, so I'm gonna get the directions out. And there's nothing wrong with them, but I just, like I said, I've been sewing a lot of years. And there's certain things I go, I got a better way. You know, I have an easier way, a faster way. She wants you to cut out all your pieces, then layer them and sew them together. And, you know, and so she has you cut them all out and sew in a circle. You know what? I find that's kind of hard to do. So what I do is, and I actually have, I don't think they make these anymore from the Sewing Revolution. I have a couple different ones of these. But I do have on there, there is a circle template that has hole, that also has holes in it. So I did this, if you remember your spirograph, I put a pen in the middle, and then I put a pen at the four and a half inch mark, and then I spun it around and I drew my circle. And so I drew, I drew my circle on my fabric. And so I just knowing I drew it on the bot the one that's going to be on the bottom. So I drew them all on my fabric. Then what I did is you layer it. Make sure you do it the right way. I did it wrong one time. Don't do it wrong. You want your back fabric. You want your front fabric right sides together. I have a tendency to mess that up. And then you're going to use some fusible fleece. But the fusible fleece, when you put it on there, the fusible side is down because when you turn it, it will now be against the bottom. Very important, it's against the bottom. So make sure when you're looking at the picture, you do it the right way. So you have the, these two right sides together and then this with the fusible side down. Then what I did is I just used an open toed foot because I actually drew my circle the size I wanted it to be. I didn't draw it with the seam allowance. I'm just gonna sew right on the line. So I could use any, I used my blue, my blue one, and yes, I did press on it. I don't care, it's not gonna show. But then you wanna use an open-toed foot because now I can use my open-toed foot, whether you use a clear one or a metal one, that's up to you. I could see where I wanted to sew, and I just sewed right along that line, okay? So then the other thing too is you have to cut a slit in this, and I don't usually cut it after the fact. You have to cut a slit and turn it. And on this one, I did that, and because the fusible is going to fuse it, it holds it down okay, but I found that it just, you know, when I was pulling it through, it frayed so much, 
it looks really messy. So I put little bandages on mine. I, I just I just fused these little pieces on there. I said, this is really bugging me. So I just stuck it on there and they get sewn down. So I fused those on there just because it was bothering me. Um, so this, one, so what I decide after that is I should fuse some kind of fusible over the slit. So when you cut it, it's not going to fray like it usually does. So after you sew it, then you're going to cut it out. So I have my one that I, so I did my slit and now I cut it out and I have a pinking rotary cutter. Do, does anybody else have a pinking rotary cutter? You do? I love these. I use these a ton. Okay. I was noticing my blade's getting a little dull. I've had it for a lot of years. It's getting a bit dull here. But I use it when I, you know, even in garment construction, going around the back edge of the collar and everything, I still use this because it's easier for me to do this than get out my pinking shears. Pinking shears would work too, but pinking shears, I still use my pinking shears, but not as much as I use my rotary cutter. So this one, it doesn't work on, this is actually a pinking, they don't make it anymore, I don't think, with the pinking rotary cutter, because it, it's fatter here. But they do have, I wrote down on there, there is one that does work with the rotary cutting blade. They have a new one that's out there, so you could buy that one. And it does work with the different wavy blades and stuff like that. So I use my rotary cutter to pink around the edge. You can see I got pretty close to that sewing line. I'm less than a quarter inch away because I need to turn it. And then you're going to turn it. Now, where is my, you know, I'm, I'm always buying notions. I always have to try new notions. Sometimes it's because I just need that extra $5 to get my order up to the minimum we have to have to order it. And so I'm like, what will I try? Um, sometimes it's because I actually want something. This is, and we have a couple of these. These are the expert point and press tools from OESD. We got these in, I was surprised because they keep telling me they're on back order. And one side is a pretty big little ball, and they're a ball. I like the heft of them too. I really like the heft of these. And then this one is a little teeny tiny one. So this little teeny tiny one to get up in the little point of, you know, like your collars and stuff. But what you're going to do is, and this one works for my bigger side, you're going to take this and you're going to turn it through your slit carefully. Try not to mess it up too much. Once I get it out there, the big side works really well. And I just run this right along, once I get most of it out. This is gonna be, you know, I'll press it. So then I run it, and because it's a ball like that, and it's a metal one, it slips really well right up in there. And I can go right along that edge and push all that out and just go right up in there. And it works really well. Some, you know, some of the tools just don't work quite as well. I have a lot of different turning tools because they do different things, but I like the, the smoothness of this one. And then I just turn it and you can see that there's a slit. And then when you press it, because this is now the fusible side, just make sure it really closes it up and, it, and you can press that closed. Okay, so that's your next step. Um, your next one, and I did actually draw this out. This is the size it should be after it's done. And you can see where the slit is supposed to be. And what I do is I line this up with the slit because it has to be this way. And I just mark here and here because that's where I'm going to sew it. Because right? you need the slit right there because what you're going to do is you're going to put these little guys in there and you want them to sew the slit closed. So you want to sew over. So I do, I mark where, where that was. I marked where I was going to sew it. This is where I have a tendency to sew them backwards. Make sure that you're sewing them with the top side together, or no, the top side not together, the bottom side together. I always do it the wrong way, and then I have it on the inside. And you just sew from those two points, and then these are going to open up. Okay, and then my other two are going to get sewn on here, so I'll sew the other two together, and then I sew them all together here, and that's going to give me my other one. Okay, now these guys, I'm thinking I'm only going to do one. I'm going to see what it looks like just to have one in the center instead of two. Because so 
it'll be a little bit different. I'm just gonna try one and see how one looks. If I don't like it, I'm just gonna lay them down. If I don't like it, I'll make a bunch more of these. Okay, so you can see that they're just all sewn together here and across. Super easy to do that. I know I did um, years ago in my in my 1930s vintage room, I did something similar to this. Um, it's kind of a fake cathedral window, if you've ever done those quilts. And I actually did the slit here because I turned it through here because when I put these down, these are actually sewn down. So there's all kinds of things you can do with circles. And I love the circles. So we have that. Now I'm gonna show you this guy, our little pedal. Now with the pedal, I know I put the, my pedal piece someplace. This one, because I don't have a cool circle thing to make this, I actually, tr I actually put this on a piece of my coaster board. That's actually this way, because I just look that way. And so this one, when I drew this one out on my fabric, this has the seam allowance on it. So now I have to sew a quarter inch on the inside of my marked line. So this is one where you really can use, you can use an ink pen if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. You could use a Sharpie because it's not, it's going to get cut off. But with this one, I needed to use my quarter inch foot. But, you know, the quarter inch foot that I've used about 99% of the time has an edge guide on it. Edge guides don't work really well when you're sewing on top of fabric. So you have to get out your quarter inch foot without the edge guide. Yeah. I know, I'm looking for it going, I haven't used this one in ages. You know, but just, so then all I did is I just sewed with my quarter inch right along that marked edge. And I did that, so I got that one done. And I marked where my slit's gonna be, so I just put a big piece of, you know, interfacing on there, this way, marked it on there. And once again, I sewed it out. I sewed it around there. Then I trimmed it with my pinking rotary cutter. But I also clipped up at the edges because it's such a sharp little edge there, you can't have all that fabric in there. So I clipped it pretty close. And then I slid it open. You know, you have to hold it up and slid it open. I'm always worried I'm gonna cut both layers when I do that. You could slit it before you sew if you wanted to. Um, and then I used, how do you have one of these? I know I'm going, I'm thinking, because as I did this, I'm going, ooh, I need my cool Turner tool. One that I don't use all that often, but this is great for, I would use it when I did collars a lot. The newer one, this is a newer version of it. it it's kind of rubbery. Mine is just all metal. She has a little, so it probably doesn't do as much damage to it. And it, she has like foam on the handle, so much nicer than mine. But anyway, these, if you've never seen these before, there's a lot of tube turners out there. And it has a sharp pointy side and a flat side. So you have to decide which side you need to go in there. Actually, I want it to go on the other side because I want to turn it the other way. So with this, this would be how you turn a tube. You just pull it in like this, and then I clip it together, and then I pull it over like this. Okay, if I can get it. It's one of those, you know, getting it started things, right? Come on. Of course, it works great when you're by yourself. So then you just pull it the other direction. And because this is a point, I put the pointed end in there, I can move that around to get it to poke out those two little edges. And then I can pull this and now I turn my tube. Okay? Never seen that. Never seen you never seen this? No. I don't even want to tell you how old this is. This is very old. Okay, so with these, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put it in there. I'm going to put my little sharp pointy part right up against there and then I'm going to turn it like this get that side out put my oops I want my flat side in there once again put this right up against right where that sewing is push this one through like that and then I can pull it almost all the way through and then I just pull it out like that and it gave me my nice little point. And then of course, 
when I iron it down, once again, this was layered the same way as the other one. You have your outside, your inside, and then your fusible in there because when you sew this down, it's gonna sew over that slit, so it's gonna keep it. But we also have some thermal thimbles, which work well to one, roll this so you don't have to lick your fingers. I can't lick my fingers right now. Lick my fingers to roll that out, and you can hold them down there and you won't burn your fingertips. Because you know, how many of us do that? But this is that point turner. So it works really well. And if I needed to poke it out a little bit more, I could just slip that sharp little point in there and just slowly put it out. But it works nice to grab and pull or turn the tubes. So I have that. And then you press it and it fuses, it fuses the back down and it'll fuse that. And then you just lay this you know, on there, she has, she marks where to put those, but you don't have to do them right there. You know, move them around and see what you want to do. You know, how many do you want? Do you want to have two in between? Or like what I'm going to do with this one, I think I may only put one in between. Do whatever you want. And you can, if you want to sew them all down, if you want to have them up, if you want to, you know, you can start playing around with them and do what you want and putting your buttons on if you want to do that, or not putting a button on if you want to put a candle on top of it, you may not want to put the buttons on there. And you can just leave them as just that little, that little part right there. And then if you don't sew them up really perfectly, and you have a little hole there, it doesn't matter, because you either put a candle on it or you'll put your button over it. It'll cover that all up. So that'll be done. So I think that's, and the other thing too is using a wool mat always helps too. I love the wool mats for pressing and everything. So you can do that. And these guys, I did top stitch around my circles to keep here. This one I did not. I did top stitch. I noticed I didn't top stitch on these little leaves, but you can top stitch if you want to pull things down more or not. If you want to do the serger version of this, you just serge around everything and then you just sew them down with your machine and then you, you could have your fun, you don't even have to do it quite as big and bold. You could use a three thread, narrow, not the three thread wide. Of course, I'm always uh, in your face, gotta be bright in your face. So, but you could do that also and you could still put your other little petals in there. So any questions? So Beth, you came in a little late just yeah, saying sorry. that we're, oh no, the, not a problem, um, that we're going to be having a big sale on our fashion fabrics, oh. the end of, starting the end of October and beginning of November and you know, 50 to 80% off on our fashion fabrics. So if you need wools to make coats, that'll be the time to do it. Okay. Well, I think that's it. I was hoping to have more people with. We are just really pared down. I think COVID has really done a number on us. Um, I don't know if there's any other things to talk about, but just so, just start looking forward to November. You know, as with anything, if there's a particular, um, I did get that ruler, I just haven't made anything, you know, that weird swirly ruler. If there's a particular ruler or a particular notion or a pattern or a technique that you want me to go over, please let me know. I know that I'm waiting for that big magnetic hoop to come in for the Solaris because I want to mm -hmm. show you how that quilting border thing works. I'm really excited about that. I just watched that. a video on that the other day. Did you watch it? Yeah. It's pretty I'm amazing. Like, Dang, God. It makes me want to get that expensive hoop. <laughs> but you can do it. I did the one, the quilt in the back, I used that border and I just used my regular magnetic. Yeah, hoop. I mean, yeah. I just when used you look that at that, one. it's like, wow. I know it was it, yeah, like, they don't even take it out of the machine. I had to yeah. take mine out of the machine. I had to yeah. go and reline up. But what was so nice about it, it was, you know, for the first time doing it, sit, having it so they put down the little point saying, match this there. Okay, right. match this here. Oh, okay. It tells you everything it's to nice. do. You just, you just like, okay. I'll move it and it works just fine. So anyway, but you can't do it with other hoops. It's just not as easy because they just leave that magnetic hoop That's right. in the machine. Can when you, you hold that. up the horse again? Just I want her to see. The oh, you want to see the, the horse? Look. Look at that. He made a horse <laughs> on a stick. Look at that. It's over here. Isn't that fun? <laughs> 
Beautiful. I used to have one of those. <laughs> like I said, I'll be putting those up there. Voting was going to start on Tuesday because I want to get all the other ones in before you start voting because I don't want you to vote and say, oh, I like this one and then you see something else. And once again, I will have this up at the register or you can do it on, you know, on Facebook. Now, so you just put the number on there. And are they in. allowed to do multiple you know, multiple votes or just one vote per person? I'm thinking one, don't you think one vote per person? Right. Yeah, okay. Right. Otherwise, I'll vote for every one right. of them, you know? Right. And so that's not going to, it's like, okay, every one of them has the same number of votes. No, I think we should um, vote for your favorite, which is always hard because you're like, but I like this one, but I like this one, but I like this one. But yes. And if you want to come, so we will take pictures of all of them and post them. So and I'm also going to record them. Tuesdays. And I will also have them up there and we will have voting for a week from mm -hmm. Tuesday to the next Tuesday. Then I'll, I'll count on Tuesday, the following Tuesday. Um, I thought I wrote down, um, I guess, I, oh, the 26th. So on the 26th, I will count up the votes and whoever wins, I will let you know. And then you can come in and get your things, but I will be putting them up on the high up on the back shelf so no one can touch them, And but people can come in and actually look at them. Okay. Where's your bag? I want to touch your bag again. No, you're not touching my bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to be doing, also you can vote on Facebook. So, but right. just just know if you vote, vote in the store, please don't vote, vote on Facebook. Because that will kind of like yeah, yeah. be cheating. It's like, ooh, ooh. well, no we cheating. see that one of them gets like 3,000 votes. Well, no, we'll sit there and say, okay, I saw her sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> but every one of my will, I'll put big numbers up on them so you know this is mm -hmm. one, two, three, right. four, five. And so then you can vote on them and just put the number on there and drop it in our little thing or just on Facebook say, mm -hmm. and even if you want to say be on the, group. the purse number this, the, the horse number that, the tuffet number this, you know, just so we know that we're getting the right one. Because if you say, I want like four, the tuffet and that horse match. not the tuffet, then we know that there's a problem. Okay. So, so you. yes, you'll vote on Facebook on our, on the Quest Club page. So just yeah, go so on your Facebook page, surf in groups, type in QESS -E -S 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 -S. Club Discussion Group. And I will join, I will accept you into the group. I just want to do that, yeah. Please do. Alrighty. And on Tuesday, we're also going to record Tuesday's class in order to get all the other stuff as well. Okay. And it's right. also only going to be on our Quest Club page. Okay, so now just so on. they can go back and relook at it just on exactly. our, our QESS page. Alrighty, so thank you, ladies. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Does anybody mind if I take this one? Alright, okay. we are going off live. Bye.